got some more upgrades in the mail. Set a hot racing diff drives, some clutch, some sweet road crushers. Those are gonna be for the Traxxas Slash. Got some tires over there that busted loose a little bit for the Slash that I re-glued. So I'm still waiting on another set of these and some 17 millimeter hexes with the 10 millimeter offset so that these things don't uh, rub anywhere. Pretty wide tire. Should get me pretty good traction, they're belted. So I'm gonna get the busted part out. That one snapped. The rear will be done today and then I'll be waiting on the for the front and then the hub extenders. I'm gonna start by taking out the receiver box, ESC and steering silver, servo all in one. There's that screw you pull, and then these four screws there on the bottom, and that whole thing will come out of there in one piece. Just got those screws out on bottom, and then I unhooked it from the motor, and this whole piece just comes out in one nice piece. You don't have to sit there and take everything apart individually. I learned that tip from a, a different video I watched. I'm gonna pull this motor out, you just kind of pry a flathead screwdriver back there while lifting up on that tab and work it from each side and it shimmies right out of there. You gotta pull the drive shaft first but we get to that. Red blocks gotta come out of there first. That screw there and that just kind of slides down and out of the way and then this this module can come right out of there. Got that pried out a little bit. You just kind of stick a screwdriver, work it from each side, and then that'll eventually come out of there. It is kind of tight if there's any dirt in there or whatnot. That just pops out really easy. I'll have to crack that open and get the clutch out of there smells nice and burnt up and then I gotta get in there to change the out drives for these hot racing that comes with them you probably can't see it that great but they're in there so to use the hot racing ones you gotta get into the diff it shouldn't be too bad I think you take those two screws out from the bottom and it kind of folds back and you can snag that right out of there. Probably end up taking these rims off too, just to make things easy. They're gonna have to come off either way. I also got some fast eddy bearings. I'll be swapping any bearing I come across with them. So those will be good and sealed and they'll handle the dirt and grit. All right, there's the busted axle. I'm gonna start by pulling those two screws on bottom. I may have to pull them ones too, but I'm gonna start with those those ones there. Did have to pull all four of those screws. Three long ones and a short one. And now this just rocks back and you can reach in there and grab that. So I'm gonna pull that open and see what I'm getting myself into here. There's the diff out of there. That's the broken side. Pull out those two screws. Yeah, them two right there, and then that comes open. And I can get into there and replace the old drives with the hot racing ones. So before I back these screws out, there's a screw there and a screw in there. You can't see it. You got to go through the end of that and line it up and back them out first. And then you'll be able to see your old drives. So before moving, those two screws, them ones gotta come out. All right, that was a bit of a trick. Those suckers were tight and you gotta like 
grab it in one hand so that you got this locked down too and really put some pressure on there to get that to break free see how easy this other one goes yeah this one's being stubborn i'm gonna have to get some kind of a wrench on there to hold it but that's you gotta have a longer allen i think that's the 2.5 Oh, it's worn off. No, that's the 2.5. This might be the, the 2. So, I'm going to get a wrench on there. Right, that sucker was tight. I just put an adjustable on there and cinched it down, but I got it backing out now. So, got that off. Now I got to pull that screw and that screw. And after that, I pull the diff apart with those screws. And I can change the drives and take a peek in there. It does look like there was a little bit of wear here. You know, it's rubbed a groove in there, so eventually I may have to get hot racing metal parts for all of this. If it's gonna be able to withstand the abuse I'm gonna throw at it. We'll see what happens. There, that is disassembled. Looks like there's a little wear here on this input gear, pinion gear, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't look terrible, so I'm just going to swap out all these bearings with the Fast Eddy ones. These are just steel shielded, and I'm going to crack this guy open. Just right there, and get them hot racing boat drives in there. Hopefully everything looks good in there. Got some of them screws loose, so I'm showing you why I have to take these apart. The out drives on these are splined, whereas the out drives on those, I guess you could call it keyed. It's got a hole in it. And these are the hot racing axles, but then that goes through those holes and then they're locked on there good. So that's why it's a little different than the factory, and this is why you got to dive so deep into it. But I did want to take a look in here and see how things were wearing and decide whether I had to get some metal parts. And it's pretty clear that eventually I'm going to have to. I kind of knew these diffs would be my next issue, but I am going to run them one more time. And if they break, I'll pull it back apart. This thing comes apart super easy. Had it apart plenty of times. This is the first time I've dove into the diffs, but I mean, it's not hard. So I'm gonna get that open and get these out drives on there. Replace all the steel shielded bearings with the Fast Eddy rubber shielded. Take a few videos as I go. But now once I get that open, it's gonna be messy in there and gear oil. So before getting these screws all the way out, you're probably gonna wanna take a flathead screwdriver and kinda pry up on that bearing. It's on there pretty good and snug. Two more screws to go and I can take a peek in there. There's a rubber gasket on there. Be careful not to tear that. You're gonna need to reuse it and kind of see some of the gears in there already. Just gently kind of pry it up and work that gasket off of there. There it is. You can see it's kind of keyed that it goes on there. There's the outdrive drive I need to replace. See there's a bearing there. I'll probably put a, I don't know if I'll put a seal one on there or not. Maybe I'm sure that one's good because it's oil soaked. All right, I just pulled that off there. You can see there is a shim. I'm gonna reuse that, put it on them ones, and then uh, jump to the other side. There's all the bearings for the kit. I'm gonna find the right size one for that and put it on there. I guess I'll probably put one on there since I'm in here. Got the Fast Eddie bearing on there. Definitely tell their quality, they're really nice. Much better than all those pieces of crap that come with it. Alright, I'm going to figure out how to get that out of there. Alright, so there was a shim on this one. I'm going to end up putting that back on there. I'll find the right size bearing for that and the fast eddies. And work on getting this apart. I lost a little bit of diff fluid replacing this. I don't have any RC at hand. It sounds like they run some pretty thick stuff so it doesn't leak out. I didn't have any, so I grabbed some from my four-wheeler. 
And that's going to work for now. I can see myself having to go all metal on all this stuff in the near future anyway. So I'm sure I'll have it back out of the car. I'll get the right stuff and go from there. I'm going to start assembling this thing back together and get it back in the car and get those beautiful things hooked up on there. It's going to look really nice with those red shocks. Hopefully this thing will scream. I was trying to run with that bearing, which matches this one here, but it seemed like I could not get the cover to go down, so I found a smaller one in the kit that seems like it's working and it closes. This is a pain in the butt to get this back together and the things lined up, but I think I figured it out and I'm going to strap it together and run it. Let's see what happens. Getting the bearing off of that was a treat. The first one right there came right off. These are the replacements. Uh, the other one would not come off closest to the gear. I put an Allen wrench on and sh or, uh, vice grips on it, shattered it. So what I ended up doing, I just had this little race left on there yet. And I stuck that whole damn part right in the freezer for five, 10 minutes. And I used this vice grips instead of this big one. And I got that on there, got it on that race, and just started wiggling and pulling, and it came off. So the freezer did help. If, if you have issues, I would just put it in the freezer right away while it's still in one piece. But damn, that, that came off tough. So I'm going to put the two new bearings on it, clean it up a little bit. Throw some marine grease all around this and uh, get it back assembled in, in the car. Freezer trick worked great. There it is. New fast eddy bearings. Spins nicely. And get this beast back in there. In that housing. There it is, put back together. Everything spins nice. Seems like those bearings did a good job. I'm just gonna. Put some of that marine grease on there and uh, clean that mess out and get it back in there. I'm gonna have to say for axles, that's a pretty big pain in the butt to have to do that, but whatever. Um, when I get those other ones, I'm probably gonna hold off and save them as a spare and wait till the front go. Damn wheels are never on the ground anyway. It's the rear that takes all the abuse. So I'll have a set of spares, or if I get antsy and want to put them in there and make it look nice, I'll do it. Now that I've done it one time, it shouldn't be terrible, but that was my first time doing it. And it's time consuming. There it is, all greased up. I'm sure that's plenty, maybe too much, we'll see. So now to clean in that and get her pop back in the truck. There it is back in. If you got the front of the truck facing you, looking at the rear, that big planetary gear goes to the left. I remembered that from when I took it out. Um, let me push it back down now and get all these bolts in and start working on the axles. All right, those four bolts go back in and then that's all put back together. I'll continue running them in and get these old Old axles off there and old hexes out. Go ahead and get there. these out. They got a little grub screw, screw in there. Um, then we'll pull that out. And pull what's left of the axles out. And get the other ones in there. <laughs> I don't have my hex adapters yet from Hot Racing. They're coming Monday. So this project's just gonna get parked until I get the parts. But at least I got a good jump start on. I'm getting these in because that was a headache, pain in my ass, so. Hey, you know, I took the little grub screw out, backed it off, I guess. That's a half millimeter, tiny little thing. The pin falls out of there, and that just pushes on out. And there that is, and I'll put a... That's a steel shielded bearing. I'll put a eddies on there, fast eddies. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the hot racing axles versus the stock ones. I mean, 
you can see where rocks got in here and that thing was gonna go eventually anyway. I put the grub screw back on and I'm gonna save that part. You never know when you need spares, but I mean, these things just seem cheap. It was only a matter of time. I know they make a heavy duty one. I kind of wish I would have went that route, seeing as how expensive these are, but I mean, you can see their quality. I know some guys have had issues with them. Other guys say they're awesome. I'll, I'll give them a shot. I mean, I got nothing else to lose. I'm throwing 6S power on this thing with a big motor, it, it's going to need to be tough. I mean, and I'm probably going to have to get all metal shit for in there too. We'll see. We'll just break it as it, fix it as it breaks, I guess. There's two sets of bearings on there. The one that goes there, and then this little one in here that pushes out. So I'll find the right bearings in my kit and, uh, Swap them out, get that in, and get everything running smoothly. The hot racing axle part, they recommend to grease the splines. I'm just going to throw a little marine grease on there just to help help keep it uh, lubed up and hopefully it lasts long. There's a picture of the grub screw that goes into there. These suckers work really nice now that they're greased up. I just got the one greased up, got to do the other one yet, but... And then that grub screw goes right into that hole there on the axle. I know it's not focusing, but a little bit of a trick to fish it in there. That bearing goes on here to hold these pins in. Alright, I ended up just pressing that bearing in there. It kept falling off the drive shaft. I just weaseled it in there and shoved it in good with my finger. It kept falling off the drive shaft trying to slip it in. So now I'm gonna try to get this hot racing drive shaft in there. Alright, I fished that in there. And you kind of got to turn this gear up front to get that hole in a good spot. Two millimeter Allen with the grub screw on it. Slide that little collar onto there and run the screw in. I forgot to mention, you do want to use Loctite. I've been using this chapstick style blue Loctite. Works pretty good, but that is metal on metal. So, I can't see it, but I, I put some on there. There it is in there. Looks nice. Um, I originally ordered these Traxxas style hubs. They say that you gotta use hot racing hubs on there. Um, I don't know if that's true. I guess I'll try to put those on. If they work, I'll run them and then I can run it today. But if not, I'll have to wait for my hot racing ones to come. I ordered the 10 millimeter extensions because of those big sweeps tires over there. I don't know if it'll clear the front when it's turning, so the back would be no problem, but the front would be my only issue. So I guess I'll give it a shot at trying to put these on. If it works, it works. That's what was going to go on the factory ones if they hadn't they broke, so. Oh, nice little addition. Looking like these are going to work. Um, they go on with a grub screw similar to what the hot racing ones do. There's no stupid pin to keep falling out and then a dumb set screw that gets loose and then your hub is loose and your wheel's wobbling. So I'm going to try to put these on there. I, I think it's going to work. But like I said, I'll still put the hot racing ones on and then these can be maybe for my tracks to slash. Oh, that hub went on there just fine. Um, they do, Traxxas does put that spray blue... Loctite on, there was a little on that screw. I still used a little more of the Loctite chapstick. It, uh, the pin comes through, I mean, that's rock solid. That shouldn't be backing out of there. And even if it were to, it would have to dog off on the rim before it could even cause anything to come loose. So that's pretty sweet and it's, it's red, it looks nice. I'll run them until 
run them on the pro lines until my hub adapters come and then I can throw those really wide bastards on there. So that's sweet. Um, and those those do come with 17 millimeter hex adapters. I bought the 14s for the original um, granites hexes. So I can just swap those out and I'll be good to go. I'm gonna tackle this other side. The old bearings out. New ones that are going in. The only way I can tell what they're for is I just size them up. There's really no other way to tell, so. That axle out. Piece of junk. See you later. Clean out them holes a little bit. Press those bearings back in and get that bad boy in there. This one greased up. Make sure you push those bearings in by hand. This one on the other back side too. Make sure they're seated good because that's the only, uh, I'm trying to ride it on that bearing like it came off on these where it's, where's the other one? Kind of sticks to those ones a little better, but on these it just slips off and I feel like it wouldn't seat well, so. Press them in with your fingers, it's not too bad to do. There they are. What a sweet setup. Nice and smooth with the Traxxas hubs on there. There's the part number for that if you want to try it out. I mean, they seem rock solid with those pins on there. And I thought you had to use hot racing adapters, but apparently these Traxxas ones work. I was reading one of the Arma forums and somebody said to grab them up. And they're working and they look pretty sweet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw them on the front too. Might get a run out of this thing yet today. Do not forget to thread lock those. These come with a little bit of thread locker on them, but I used even more. So I mean, metal on metal, it, it comes undone, those old grub screws. They just repeatedly come undone, even with Loctite. It was a crappy setup. This is much more solid. I couldn't really find any videos of anybody installing these hot racing drive shafts on any of the Arma lineup. So that's why I took the time to kind of cover it. It's really not that hard to figure out. It's just a lot of steps and it's time consuming. So, but it definitely seems like a solid product. All right, I'm gonna get the, get the front 17s on, get those swapped out to 17 millimeter hubs. Those are 14 bolted in there, but it, they come with 17, so I had to buy the 14 separately. Maybe you can try running them, big old beasts. I'm gonna be testing this on 4S first before I jump to 6S and destroy everything. So if it can handle 4, then I'll give her a run at 6. I still, wherever that motor went, gotta pull this apart and get that smoked clutch out of there. I loosened it way too much and I knew it. I should have just taken it back apart, but I decided to slowly feather in the throttle and next thing you know it was locked up and that's when the drive shaft broke, so I don't even think I'm gonna mess with the new clutch. I'm just gonna put it right in there, spur gear, whatever you wanna call it, slipper set. It's steel. So, I did see videos on how to set it, but I might try that too, we'll see. I'd rather just not mess with it. It was good from the factory, I shouldn't have touched it. One side on these Tractus, Traxxas adapters, is uh recessed countersunk whatever you want to call it i got lucky on the first two and didn't have to deal with it but i tried to just put this in backwards and there is only one way it can go in there they all are on there i will say that looks pretty sweet i'm gonna go ahead and put some tires on this thing and check it out before i start working on that clutch slipper clutch whatever it is wow look at those tires on there you will have to use a socket from now on to put these on. 
they go on nice and tight with that blue thread locker that Trax has put on those hubs. But wow, the steering looks like it should clear. Uh, the servo ain't hooked up yet. I may have to set the steering endpoints less, which would be fine because I'm speed running this beast and it don't really need to turn much except for at the end of the street. So, and by then I'm going super slow. Holy smokes, those are for a one eighth car too. They're they're big. I kind of want to get some pro lines that are bigger than those two, and then use those on the slash. Maybe have to trim the body or something, get a different body, raise the body, something. But those are some sweet tires off road on on road. They're super grippy. Damn thing does wheelies and lands on its back. At some point, I'll need a new body, but it's holding up. Holy smokes. Well, I'm going to start working on that clutch. All right, so I'm cracking this open. Pull those three screws. Going after the slipper clutch. Got the new steel one here. There's the part number. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to drop it right in. Put this all back together. Get it in the truck. Get it running. I'm going to assume these are directional tires. They have little arrows on them. Face them forward. Um, and then we continue working on this. Okay, so there was some damage in here. That is the set screw for that. I had to pry it out. That was just bouncing around there. This thing is smoked. It's just toast. It was rubbing. Rubbing in here. Get this cleaned up. And hopefully it didn't cause any damage to that new motor. That would suck. So let's hope everything goes together good. I'll get these bearings swapped out with fast eddy ones and go from there. With that grub screw falling out, it mangled it. There's the original 15 tooth pinion. I'm gonna steal the grub screw out of that and fish it into there. That's a 26. Focus. It's as big as you can go on there. Get this all together and hopefully everything works. Got that grub screw back in there. Everything's on. Put these bolts back in. Get it back in the car. Got it all back together. It slides in those grooves. on there you got to get the spline lined up on that one and send her home there it is went on a little tough but it's nice and snug make sure it gets into that clip put that red guy back in there that slides in on grooves too drive shaft back in all that back in and then seeing that that grub screw backed out i might give it time because last time i just ran her and obviously it came out that might have been why everything locked up and broke the way it did, I don't know. So, get everything put back together. Drive shafts back in. You definitely hear those metal parts in there, but hopefully that's what makes it durable. I'll go ahead and put all that in now. Alright, I'm putting the screws back in, holding it with one hand. Got to get all those back in, line that up. That's the steering shaft. The bigger screw goes in there. Get it hooked up. All right, all the screws are back in. That's the tricky one. That one I was wrong. That's for the battery tray. I had to take that out to be able to run three of uh, batteries in it. So there it is, all hooked up. Looking pretty sweet. Big old road crushers on there, belted tires. I'm gonna try plugging a two 2s two packs in this which will make a 4s that's what those extra cords do there or you can put a plug in one and run it on whatever but i'm pretty sure you got to be on three to six s on this esc i don't think it'll take two s so i'm gonna start things off slow make sure everything's rolling good and if i like what i see then i'll throw six s at it with that 26 in there i'm assuming she's gonna hit some pretty good speeds i would have figured i had it going 55 before most of these upgrades, so it's gonna be killer. 
There it is with the body on it. A nice looking truck. New axles in there. Hopefully everything holds together head on. There's the tires I was running on it. These things are pretty cool. Can't wait to get it outside and try it. All right, I put a 3S battery in there just to test out the steering to make sure it's gonna clear the shocks. Everything clears, clears with the body on, clears while well, it's on the ground. Well, like I said, I do think I am gonna give this overnight to let the Loctite on that pinion gear from the motor get good and hard. Cause last time it backed out and I'm done taking chances. Road's wet anyway, it's raining out. It's a good day to sit here and wrench on this. Well, I'm gonna be patient, give it overnight. Started out on 4S and if I like it, then 6S and this thing is gonna scream. Alright, I'll get some run videos in tomorrow and post it.